The objective for this video is to learn how to use exponential functions to model growth or decay within an application problem. There are two functions that we've talked about in class pertaining to growth and decay exponential uh, story problems. The first one is a equals p times 1 plus r to the power of t. And the other is a equals p 1 minus r to the power of t. So these two functions look very similar except for one stark difference in that they're 1 plus r and 1 minus r. 1 plus r is going to be your growth model because it creates a b value larger than 1, therefore making it a growth exponential function. And the 1 minus r function is going to be decay because 1 minus r will make a b value less than 1 but bigger than 0, which is the definition of a exponential decay function. So depending on the situation, you have to determine whether this is growth or decay exponential. Um, growth could be words like increasing, appreciate, earning money. Uh, decay could be depreciate, decreasing, um, and other words that mean uh, a decrease in amount. So if we look at number one, it says, you deposit $150 in a savings account that earns 5% annual interest compounded yearly. So you deposit $150 in a savings account that earns 5% annual interest. So earning means that you're making money, which means your amount of money grows. It's going to be exponential growth. And it's important to identify this before you choose your function because there are different functions fundamentally. One is 1 plus r. One is 1 minus r. One has a b value larger than 1. One has a b value less than 1. So we're going to choose the growth function. A equals p times 1 plus r to the power of t. Now, p, r, and t are variables. Um, and some of them are given, some of them are not. In this case, p, principal amount or initial amount or your starting amount, is given to you. p is going to be... $150. That's what you start with. R is your rate. And they give us an interest rate of 5%. So R is going to be 5%. However, we do not use the percentage. We use the decimal version of the rate, which is 0 0.05. Essentially, you're taking 5 and dividing it by 100. They do not give us T in part A. So when it asks you to do this, write a function that models the balance in the account after t years, you need an exponential function with a t variable that's not plugged in yet. So plug in the values you do know. a equals 150 times 1 plus 0 0.05 to the power of t. And that ends up being 150 times 1.05 to the power of t. And it's just important to look at this again, and I'm going to highlight the B value. The B value, 1.05, is larger than 1, making it a growth function, most definitely. It says find the balance in the account after 3 years. So, plug in 3 for T. So, 150 times 1.05 to the power of 3. When you calculate this, it's going to be an approximate number. And you're going to round to the nearest hundredth because we're dealing with dollars. So this turns into $173.64. So if you round to the nearest hundredth, we're dealing with dollars. And that's how much money is in the account after three years. Now, does this answer make sense? I had exponential growth, which means my money amount should be larger than when I started. 173.64 is larger than 150. So therefore, this answer does make sense. Moving on to number two. One industry, computer industry expert reported that, were, that there were about 600 million computers in use worldwide in 2001, and that number was increasing at an annual rate of about 10%. So we are looking for a function that models the number of computers in use over time. So just a function. We don't have a time value yet, just what the function is. So is it growth or decay? If there are 600 million computers in use worldwide in 2001, 
that number is increasing at an annual rate of 10%. The keyword being increasing. Therefore, it's going to be growth. So your function is going to be A equals P, your initial value in 2001, is 600 million. Now you could just put down 600 and then put million at the end of your answer, number part B, or you can write out the entire number. 1 plus 10% as a rate is 0 0.10. And to simplify this even more, A equals 600 million. times 1.10 to the power of t. So this is a function that if you were given an amount of time, you could find out how many computers there are in the world after that set amount of time. Part B says use the function to predict the number of computers that will be in use worldwide in 2009. 2009 is your end date. 2001 was our beginning date. So therefore, 2009 minus 2001 is going to be 8 years, which is your t. So if you plug in 8 for T, it look like this. 600 million times 1.10 to the power of 8. And when we round that, calculate it, you get approximately 1,286,000,000 computers. I'm going to do one more example here. Number four says you purchase a cell phone for $125. The value of the cell phone decreases by about 20% annually. So we're looking at the word decreases here. That tells you right away decay. So it's not going to be 1 plus r in the parentheses. It's going to be 1 minus r. Write a function that models the value of the cell phone over time. a equals p. Principal value is 125. Now it's going to be 1 minus r in the parentheses. So 1 minus 0 0.20. 20% is 0 0.20 to the power of t. Simplify that down. a equals 125 times 0 0.80 to the power of t. Now look at your b value. 0 0.80, compare that with 1. It is less than 1, which makes it a decay function, which is what we called for in the very beginning, which matches up, so therefore it makes sense. So B, find the value of the cell phone after 3 years. 3 years is your given time value. It's going to be A equals 125 times 0 0.80 to the power of 3. And when you calculate that, going to be $64. That makes sense because $64 is less than the original value and we have decay so therefore that makes sense that the number went down.